Welcome to the EchoCast, episode 121, Kenley Tower? This is a podcast about the Division 2, its community, news, speculation, and updates. I am Bond Diesel. I do Division stuff, such as this podcast, Twitch streams, and YouTube videos, mostly about the Division 2. Please take a moment to subscribe to and rate the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it on. This episode, we will talk about the Division 2 Ubisoft Forward trailer and some kind of neat stuff with that. Uh, some, the PTS and how things are going so far and some thoughts there. Reddit's reaction to the PTS and some other things. Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer's video about the summit and some forced summit directory uh, directives and how people feel about it. As well as some other gaming news such as the Xbox Uh, news that came out today some speculation about playstation 5 and new nvidia gpus we'll end this baby with some content updates but first i would like to thank this month's patreon supporters hassan christian darren tim and pk if you would like to support this podcast and my other content please check out patreon.com slash bon diesel okay so in, in lieu of a state of the game recap i am going to talk about the the division two trailer that got shown in the pre-show of the ubisoft forward um, that showed on thursday uh, september 10th and we're going to break that down a bit and then i'll present my thoughts afterwards so the division trailer was basically a stylized and a bit humorous um, showing of the uh, the new the summit mode uh, without anything really groundbreaking, um, any big news from it, um, but more uh, basically a confirmation and a hint to those who haven't been paying attention to the PTS that you fight hunters at the end. Kind of wish they didn't spoil that, but that's fine. Whatever. At this point, who cares? <laughs> um, the trailer, uh, the gameplay trailer did end with a, uh, to me, which was a was a big surprise announcement of a special event coming this winter called nightmare that will take place at Kinley college. Um, and it was shown, uh, basically there was just some footage of Kinley college uh, at nighttime with a storm going on and some kind of, uh, scary music playing. So we'll have to see what that means. Um, this trailer also confirmed that TU 11 and the summit would arrive on September 22nd. Um, I assume with season three starting probably the week afterwards, or maybe a few days later, uh, Yannick did appear on, uh, the, the, the little trailer and talked about and confirmed that season three will come with TU 11 and that the main target for the manhunt will be Brandon Schaefer, who is the black tusk special forces leader that we've been dealing with. Um, and we've been picking off all of his team members for, uh, basically the entirety of the end game division two story. He also briefly talked about TU 12, which will include season four, which will have the main manhunt target as Fei Lao and will include this new nightmare special event. That's going to be time limited uh, that we currently don't really have any details about. Uh, and for division two, that seemed like it was about it. He did throw in a little detail at the end saying um, that Uh, The Division 2 is going to be backwards compatible with the PS5 and the new Xboxes, personally. So this is getting into my thoughts. Um, So the backwards compatibility thing, I'm getting, I I get why um, they they keep saying it like that. I understand that to like the layman consumer, um, that's the best way to like, it's basically saying it's still going to work on the new systems. It's just from a technical standpoint, they're actually, they aren't actually aren't backwards compatible or forwards compatible or whatever. Um, they just play natively. Um, people need to realize that the, the PlayStation five and the new Xboxes are essentially just upgrades to the previous platforms, um, because their CPU architectures haven't changed 
and um, everything that works on the current systems from a technical standpoint should work on the new systems because essentially this is like taking your uh, your PC with parts from 2013 and putting parts from 2020 in it. All of your software will still work because it's you're not changing platform. You're not changing any architecture. The reason the PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s kind of screwed everything up and they had to actually do backwards compatibility was because those two systems use proprietary CPUs and um, different proprietary technology. Uh, whereas the PlayStation, uh, actually, I don't know about the PlayStation 2, but I know the original Xbox was x86 or was mod, was regular PC technology. I assume PS2 was as well. Uh, and then they went proprietary, which made nothing work on both. And then they came back with the new systems, the Xbox One and PS4, which are essentially just PCs uh, from a parts. Uh, and the new systems are as well. So this whole talk that they keep doing about backwards compatibility, it, it kind of, from a from a PR standpoint, it's the right way to explain it. From a technical standpoint, I, I don't think it is. Um, so just get that out of the way. Okay, so the, the surprise of this trailer was the Nightmare event being announced. Um, this, this surprised me. This was not in the TU-10 uh, data mind leaks. Um, this wasn't being talked about uh, in that, and there must not have been any of the data for it in there. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's going to be some type of event, of event utilizing uh, the location of Kinley College, um, likely with new enemies, a new, hopefully a whole new, basically just to make it a mission or make it some type of um, activity that's a little bit less tedious or a lot less tedious than the current uh, Kinley model. Um, if I had to guess, um, I think it's going to relate to a thing or things that are going to happen in season three um, because this is coming in season four. Um, what's, what's tough, uh, if you want to kind of dig more into that, I suggest going back a few episodes where I discussed all of the spoilers from the TU-10 PTS uh, in depth. It's probably been a few months now, um, but if you go back, there should be like a spoiler warning um, episode. So um, two things with the nightmare mode. Um, one, uh, I'm super pumped for this because I actually think Kinley College is a really, really cool environment. Um, it's a really pretty level. They, they, the environmental design of that level uh, in that whole area is incredible. So to know that we're going to go back there with some purpose is good. My concern, and this isn't really Massive's fault, is that since we have zero clue what it, what it is, and we won't, I assume, have any real clue until November, December, more than likely, is now the, the speculation machine has already begun and while I know it may be hypocritical for me to say this, um, that can be really bad and unhealthy and disappointing. So my speculation is that it's basically going to re um, reboot uh, Kinley College and make those three uh, mission areas something new. I assume it's going to be the same architecture, essentially, um, but that your task there will be maybe more traditional or more um just more interesting than the current way you play kinley college and i think when you complete all three areas it's going to culminate into some type of big fight uh, in the quad or in the courtyard um, if you've listened to this podcast for a long time you'll know that i have said repeatedly if i could go to kinley college uh, complete the three areas and then fight hunters guaranteed in the courtyard i would go do it probably every week because I like fighting hunters and I actually don't hate Kinley college as much as I, I think some people do. I think I like playing in that level. I just don't feel like there's any payoff to doing it. So I think that that old idea I have is going to be, I don't think I came up with it. I highly doubt anyone who worked on this even listens to this podcast, but I think that general idea is probably what they're going to do. The problem is, is that I've already seen multiple people already suggesting like, oh, maybe Kinley College is the new underground. Maybe it's new survival. Maybe it's, it's, it's probably not. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't, a, a big problem with the division specifically, 
um, slightly because of some maybe issues with communication um, is that the, the fan base likes to go kind of wild and they really fixate on like certain things. This community has a bad habit of always fixating on, uh, especially with division two, fixating on things they miss from division one and just assuming every single potential new content is going to be some rehash of the first game. And it's probably not going to be. And at some point, you know, we have to be fine with that. Um, and it, so what's interesting is that like in a perfect world, they could withhold what nightmare is until it releases. And then people would be excited for whatever it is. Um, the reality is that they're probably going to have to reveal what it is. Um, in, you know, in, in some, some time ahead, you know, to, to set people's expectations appropriately. But the problem is, is that even as of today, um, a lot of people's expectations are already set and nothing that they actually put out will probably meet those. The other issue I'm concerned about is that the nightmare mode may be whatever it is, may be super cool and may come off as like the best replayable content or at least content that people would like to replay. And it's going to be a time limited event. <laughs> Um, so we'll have to see what that means. Like, is it time limited the way that Kinley college is now where it will only open up every so many weeks, or are they going to put out this nightmare mode for like a month and then you'll never be able to play it again? You know, so we'll, we'll have to see what they do. Um, beyond all of those concerns, I'm just happy that there's a thing that got announced that we had no idea about. I had been saying pretty often in the last you know week or two, uh, or whenever they announced uh, this Ubisoft forward to just not expect anything new. And the fact that we actually did get something new um, is awesome. And that makes me super happy. Um, uh, f as for the, the, the summit trailer, I mean, I think it kind of just was what it was. Um, I don't think it surprised anything. If you want my more in-depth um, thoughts on that, uh, check out my YouTube. It's just Bond Diesel on YouTube. And I did a breakdown of this whole trailer um, and uh, actually on video and pointed out some things. Um, but this was just kind of, you know, what we expect for uh, with new content coming. They were going to do some cool looking trailer. Um, I know on my stream uh, when I was watching this, uh, Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, who I'll talk about here in, uh, here in a little bit after the break, um, popped in and said that what he saw in that trailer looked a lot better than what he's playing. So the optimist in me says that the, what they're currently playing is a old build and there's more to it than what we know so far. The pessimist in me thinks that it was just a polished up trailer. Um, so we'll have to see. Um, as for the announcements about season three and four, um, if you were one of the people, uh, I am one of them who read the title update 10 PTS uh, spoilers, uh, the data mining, uh, it seems like basically all of the information in there was true. Um, what I will say is if you're hesitant to go read that, then just don't. Um, but if you're curious enough that you want to, I don't feel like it gives away everything that must be coming. I know for season two, it had a lot of the details that we got, but it didn't really seem to like spoil it necessarily though. To be fair, there wasn't a ton of spoil with season two. Now, what I will say, just as a warning, um, that season three and four have some uh, big twist. Um, I don't think those will really appear for a while. Um, I, I don't think that those will come in the first few targets that we go after. But by the end of season three and by the end of season four, um, I think people who care about the lore and where this game is going narratively um, will be at least entertained happy is uh you know up to you i'm happy with where I, where I think it's going but we'll have to wait and see um there's some stuff happening and some people being revealed and and information coming that i think is going to be cool for people who care about that stuff um from a gaming standpoint i expect season three and four to basically be the way that manhunts have been this whole time uh besides the final missions and we'll i'll kind of leave it there um so yeah, uh, I, I think that was actually a more impressive showing. If you want me to be totally honest than I really expected from this trailer, I, again, like I said, I, I assume since they were showing this stuff for division two before the actual Ubisoft forward, I just figured it was going to be kind of just 
rehash stuff we've already gotten and maybe a story about teddy bears. And it wasn't, it, there was some uh, genuine surprising information there and some confirmation. Uh, I know for me, the information about season three and four uh, isn't new because I've read the spoilers, but for everyone who hasn't, that's new information and that's cool. I'm happy. Um, and I'm always happy to see Yannick's face. So, uh, so we'll stop with that there. I'm going to jump into the mid roll and then we'll talk about a bunch of division two topics, some other gaming topics and some content updates. Okay. So some division two topics, uh, th these all kind of run in together, but I'll try to kind of separate them. Um, so someone on Reddit did make a big post about the PTS apparel mod, um, system and they showed a bunch of examples and it's like exactly what I was hoping. Um, there's people making like hunter outfits that like actually look like hunters, um, by using gear that's actually just in the game. Um, instead of, I'm sorry, I think the cosmetics they put out the outfit and the individual pieces just look terrible. I, I don't, I don't think they look good at all. I, I am kind of genuinely surprised they even did it because they're just, it's just ugly in my opinion, but maybe I'm just a prude. Um, and, and, but then outfits of all kinds, like people who actually look like military people, some operator types, some goofy stuff too, I'm sure. Um, some really, really like bare bones looking gear. Um, you know, you can kind of go for what you want. And that's why I, I'm more excited about this apparel mod system than I probably should be. Uh, and the examples I saw in this Reddit post, uh, definitely kind of pushed me forward there. Uh, on the Twitter and forums, uh, there were some PTS phase two notes. Um, I'm recording this on Friday, uh, September 11th. Uh, and as of today, phase two of the PTS has opened up. I think it actually opened up about, about 30 minutes ago. So, um, it, it looks like they basically fixed a bunch of stuff. Um, with the summit, there's, uh, the issues with, uh, the, the hundredth floor and the enemies you were fighting there and the environment and things being a little unfair and being able to finish uh, level hundred without actually completing the level. Um, so they fix all that stuff up. So I assume I'm sure by now, so they've already gone up there and finished it. Uh, so we'll have to, um, I've been avoiding watching very much stuff directly like live streams and stuff. Um, one, because a lot of the people putting out content about it, I just don't care to watch. Um, or the people who I do like aren't streaming when I'm able to watch. Um, and because I'm trying to save some type of, uh, you know, judgment for myself for, uh, for the live version that comes out. Um, and then they did a bunch of changes to some gear. They changed some percentages. Uh, it looked like there were some fairly significant PVP changes that happened, but nothing I saw really seems like it's gonna, you know, maybe change the overall narrative of where P, uh, uh PVP is at. Um, I, just as a side note, I went, um, my conflict level, I played conflict a handful of times when the game first came out, kind of enjoyed it at first, uh, and then just kind of lost interest in it. I played conflict a few times last week and that is just such a shit show. I know that most people care more about, um, the dark zone in this game. I still think that conflict is the best chance this game has, um, for enjoyable PVP for more people. Um, but the, the experience that that is right now is not fun. It is rough. Um, it's bad. It's all the exact same builds. I assume it's similar builds that people are running in the DZ. Uh, it's just bad. It's bad PVP, man. <laughs> I don't, at this point, I'm, I'm sick of trying to cater to people and, and stroke their egos and, and say like, I respect, no, I don't. It's that's bad PVP, man. If you play any other PVP that's widely known for being like quote unquote good or balanced or whatever, and then you play whatever conflict is right now. And I assume that I assume the DZ as well, that's just bad PVP. <laughs> so, um, I hope that these changes they're making make that better. Um, but I didn't see any changes that are going to change the things I didn't like about the experience I saw, um, recently. So, um, and then there were a bunch of other like bug fixes and stuff like that. I didn't see anything really huge for this phase two. And what we know is that phase two should end on the 18th. And we know that the summit and TU 11 are releasing on the 22nd and something to keep in mind. Um, I assume that means that they, are going to very soon or already have sent the final version uh, to Xbox and Sony to get those approved to put out on those systems on the 22nd. Maybe they do that next week. So it gives them a few more days to fix things up, but it's kind of a reminder of the reality of PTS 
is that the PTS is a demo of things that are coming um, and a chance to find and fix maybe like balance, like really small balance issues or maybe like really major bugs. Um, but the PTS is not a development build. It's a demo of what's coming to see how things work and really to collect data. So uh, for all the times I see people making these grand giant suggestions, expecting them to be implemented in one week, it's another reminder that that just isn't realistic. Uh, I was going to talk a bit about um, some of the feedback I saw about uh, the, the summit and the big thing that was being discussed on the subreddit was the force directives. Uh, I talk, I'm going to talk about Buzz's video as well. That kind of goes into this, but um, just really people just ripping on the force directives. Like I personally hate the directives. I didn't like directives in division one in the underground. I never turned them on because um, at least those ones had like a, a give and take where there was um some advantage by using directives, but then a big disadvantage. Um, but it was kind of up to you whether or not you were punished or not. Um, with the way it looks like it's in the summit, it, it's just kind of this arbitrary directives they throw in. Um, in the PTS notes, they did say they took some of the, um, I think they knocked one directive off uh, the upper levels. Uh, but still, it just seems like it's kind of, the summit isn't a competitive mode. And so if it was competitive mode, I would understand why they would want to randomize or standardize um, the experience for everyone and force everyone to have the same experience since it's really just going to be, I'm, I'm sure there's people who are going to speed run it and there's going to be some small niche competition there. Uh, but beyond that, it's probably a very small number of people. Um, I really, the summit should probably be customizable entirely for everyone. Um, maybe even if there was some type of UI, now this is me being a hypocrite. I don't expect them to do this by the 22nd, but if at some point they could add some UI that just let you set the entire tower as challenging, and then maybe you can even change it as you're going through it, um, to bump it up or bump it down. If you are having trouble, um, or to even customize each zone. Uh, that you could click through and say, I want this one to be that and that and that and that. Um, and maybe lock the top 20 or something to being like uh, the, the legendary difficulty or, or whatever. So um, yeah, the force directives are a thing I'm not super excited to play through because I hate most of the directives, um, especially because like the one with skills kind of like negates my main build. Um, even though now I do have uh, a couple more builds that are much more viable, just straight like DPS builds or hybrid builds. Um, and then finally, in the TD2 topics was I watched the video that Lieutenant uh, Buzz Lightbeer made about the summit. Um, there's not very many creators I really um, care to watch videos about anymore because most of them are just the same thing. Um, and they're kind of all going for the same um, kind of, uh, toxic kind of shock content of, you know, making shit up and, um, being very sensational. Um, I don't always agree with buzz about his information. In fact, I rarely do. Um, but I do feel like he always does a good job from the information presentation perspective. Um, and then his own opinions are his own opinions. I don't expect mine to be the same and they often aren't. Um, but he did a good video on YouTube. Go check out his um, YouTube page and give it a view. Um, just breaking down the summit and then his opinions on what's wrong with it. And a lot of them I agree with as much as I can because I haven't played it, but talking about having more varied enemy spawns, the layouts of the levels being very uninspired and super repetitive, um, and not forcing the difficulty and directives kind of like I talked about before. Um, the, the, the one that really stood out to me that annoyed me was the layouts and how he was talking about how the, the layout of each, you know, there's only like 10 or 11 different layouts and a lot of them don't even really make sense from like a realism perspective. And what's frustrating about that to me is that something like that would be acceptable and like what the underground was because the underground, um, was a randomly generated level every time you went into it. So each phase that you would go into was generated as you started it. So there would occasionally be like a mall off of a sewer. Like it wouldn't make sense, but that's because the algorithm probably just wasn't perfect for that. So the problem with the layouts not making sense and not being varied enough with the summit is that they've made it very clear that it's not randomly generated, that all 100 levels 
were specifically designed. And now I fully understand that designing a hundred unique levels would be extremely time consuming and probably unrealistic with whatever, you know, however many people are working on the game at this point, or were allowed to work on this specific content. Um, but like the fact that like, I've seen multiple people, multiple people point out that there's like no windows. So, and I understand it, it'd, it'd be tough to like make like a skybox outside of this. And, but you could even have just like closed shutters that have like a glow coming through that. I don't know, make it look like an office building. <laughs> um, so it seems like there's definitely like an environmental design issue. Um, a neat idea that, uh, Buzz did bring up was kind of turning the summit into a, a different type of survival mode where you'd start out on floor one at normal difficulty with just green gear with crappy gear. And as you went up the floors, it got more difficult, but they also dropped gear that you could pick up and, and then that you could get from crates and stuff like that to improve your character all the, all the way up to the top to the final battle. And by then you'd maybe be able to craft gear and things like that. Super good idea. Um, I, sometimes I do get a little frustrated with people, especially people in the know, like Buzz, um, who are EFT, um, who just kind of understand that that's not realistic for the next like week. Um, and, and I think sometimes people will say that type of stuff and get people all hyped up and then disappointed when it, when that stuff doesn't happen. Um, I mean that, that idea, implementing an, an idea like that, I assume would take six months to a year at least, and, and probably more. Um, if so, if they aren't working on it today, which I'm sure they're not, cause that's not what they were trying to do with this mode. Um, you know, that's, that's, it's just not realistic to implement something like that as cool as it really does sound. So, yeah, so there's the division two stuff. Um, I do want to go back. If you don't know, I had a Xbox podcast, um, that really just wasn't, it was doing okay. Um, but compared to this podcast, especially, um, and just the time invested and taking to make it and edit and do all of that stuff. Um, it just, the time wasn't worth, uh, the return on what I was getting, uh, listen wise and things like that. So I did end the Xbox dad cast. Uh, so in lieu of that, I would like to replace, um, I'm going to throw in kind of like an other gaming news segment, uh, to the echo cast. Uh, I used to do this actually. Um, and so what we're going to talk about is the Xbox series S being revealed and details about the S and the series X, um, have been revealed by Microsoft this week, um, apparently a week ahead of what they wanted to do, uh, but some leaks of trailers and information came. So, so what we found out is that the series S and X are going to go up for pre-order, I believe on September 24th or 22nd, one or one of the two, uh, the series S is going to be two ninety nine, and the series X is going to be four ninety nine. Uh, now I still think the series X I've seen estimates that to make a series X equivalent PC right now, you're looking at at least 900, but probably closer, uh, probably more and even up to $1,500 to make an equivalent system. Um, which is, uh, that means the X is a pretty good bang for the buck. So to remember what the X really is providing is, um, it seems like the base, what they're, what they're going for is 4k 60 FPS. Um, the digital foundry did some testing with the X and basically figured that the GPU in it is equivalent to about, uh, an NVIDIA, NVIDIA 2080. Um, so I, I don't know if they meant a 2080 or a 2080 TI or a 2080 super. I'm just going to assume a 2080. Um, the uh, SSD is fairly standard, but still an NVMe SSD, which is extremely fast and very good. Um, I think it has the equivalent of about 16 gigs of DDR six Ram and, um, the, the, it's a, I want to say a 3.8 gigahertz. Um, one of the three, um, the, the third series or the Ryzen was it Ryzen two series, uh, CPU. So, I mean, it's a beefy machine. Um, and at least for the next year or two, it's an extremely good deal compared to what you can build yourself. Now the S details have come out and what's really interesting is most people, I think were assuming the S, um, especially if it was going to be really cheap was essentially going to be an Xbox one X with an SSD. And what we found is that that's not entirely true. So what the S actually is, is it only has 10 gigs of Ram, but that's still not awful because the point of the S is that it's only shooting for 1080p or 1440p. So it's not even attempting 4k. Now, it, apparently it can up, um, like up res to 4k, uh, and do it well, but that's not, that's not what it's going for. 
Uh, so it's, it's only got 10 gigs of RAM as opposed um, to 16, which isn't awful, um, especially for what it's going for. Uh, the GPU uh, is quite a bit less powerful. So um, the GPU of the of the Series X, for whatever what it's worth, is rated at 12 teraflops. Um, I don't even really know what that compares to with other systems, but it's kind of a marketing term. Um, I believe the Series S is only being rated at, at, at four flops. Um, but for, again, for what it's trying to do, it's not too bad. Um, that is in comparison to the One X, which is rated at six. Uh, but people have kind of pointed out that the series or the the one x is going for 4k where the s isn't um the big news for me though was that it's the same cpu um, i actually thought that it would use a, a potentially much less powerful cpu but it's actually the same cpu as the series x though it is down clocked a little bit i think it's a, a 3.6 gigahertz instead of 3.8 uh, i'm pretty sure that's the difference which is pretty negligible. Uh, and it has the NVMe SSD, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, what's interesting is because it has, um, still has a good GPU and has the same CPU, it's still going to have ray tracing. It's still going to have all of those same effects as the, as the X. So what we've learned is that the series S isn't just an upgraded one X. It's actually just a series X, um, that's targeting 1080 P and 1440 instead of 4k. Um, and, the, and it's only two ninety nine, which is bonkers. Um, so I think this was a huge move by, um, Microsoft. They also announced that, uh, their game pass, uh, ultimate is going to include EA play. Um, now people need to realize that EA play isn't like game pass for EA. Um, it's mostly older games. Um, and, and it's normally like a 10 hour preview of new games when they release. Uh, that's how I played Anthem and a, and a few other games, but it's still a pretty damn good deal. And it's definitely a good addition. I believe it's adding 60 games to game pass. Uh, so you're even talking about classics like, um, mass effect and things like that. So, so it, it's not as, it's not like going to give you Madden 21 the day it releases. It'll probably eventually give it to you probably next year. Um, but it's still going to give a lot of value and for no extra cost. The final big thing that Microsoft announced was that they're doing an all access deal where you can pay 25 bucks a month, I believe for two years for a series S or 35 bucks a month for two years for a series X that includes the system and includes, um, game pass ultimate and the EA play now and your online access. So games with gold and all of that. And what people have actually figured out is that if you take that into account, um, for both systems, at the end of the two years, because it's a 0% interest uh, payment plan, uh, you'll actually end up paying a little bit less for the X and the S than you would if you paid for them straight up and then paid for those services for two years. Now, in theory, you could buy an X or an S and not get ultimate, just have regular, um, I guess, Xbox Live, um, and, and it would be cheaper. But if you're buying an Xbox and not buying ultimate at this point, it, you, you, you might be better off just going for a PC or a, a PlayStation because it's, that's the value. That's at least the value of Xbox right now. Um, now as they start to have more exclusives come out and things like that, maybe then it's worth it to just buy those games when they come out. But here's the thing. If you have game pass, you have all of the 160, whatever games now that are on there. But then as the new halo comes out and the new Hellblade comes out and the new, all of their first party games are going to be free or not free, but they're going to be included in game pass. So, and then if you say you have a PC too, and you have a PC in your gaming den, but you have the Xbox out in your living room and sometimes you want to play it, you know, this ultimate works on your PC as well. And having it on your Xbox means that you also have it on your PC. And it's also, um, the, the cross, uh, the, the, the cross save. So like you can play stay of decay two on your PC when you're gaming by yourself. But then if you're hanging out in the living room and you just don't want to sit in your den and play, you can load up your same save and play it. Like, uh, I don't, that doesn't work for all of the games, but it's, it's a big thing. And I believe it works for all of the Microsoft games. It, it's a really good deal. And what it kind of segues into is kind of talking about PlayStation five and how they're going to answer this. 
Um, the speculation on that has been really interesting. The, the day all of this information came out, I believe it was Tuesday, I believe it was the 25th anniversary of the PlayStation. And so there was a lot of speculation last week that Sony was going to drop prices and things like that. And, and maybe even the pre-order system for the PlayStation five on Tuesday and intentionally or unintentionally Microsoft, um, kind of dropped their hammer that day. Uh, I have a hard time believing what I think the original plan was is Phil Spencer's already said they plan on dropping all of this Xbox information next week. Um, the week of September 14th. And, I think they were going to do that because they assumed the PlayStation was going to drop information the week before this week that we're currently in, and they were going to try to answer. And instead of what's happened is that since the Microsoft information leaked, um, now the, the roles are kind of flipped. Now what that does give is Sony an opportunity to reevaluate what they were going to put out. Um, even though I have a pretty good feeling that this late in the game, whatever they were going to do with pricing and stuff like that is probably just set. Um, and that comes down to what is the PlayStation five going to cost now? Um, I'm obviously an Xbox fan and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, but I don't have anything against PlayStation. It's fine. Like I just don't like their controller. Um, a lot of their exclusives, I'm more than happy to just watch the cinematic summaries on YouTube. I, I there's, there's nothing like they don't have a halo, uh, even though really Xbox hasn't had a quote unquote halo since like three, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, but it's interesting seeing like people who are obviously like more Sony leaning saying that they think that PlayStation five is going to come in as cheap as like 300 bucks or something. That's people just reacting to the S the, the PlayStation five is not going to be $300. There's no way. Uh, I've seen a lot of other speculation that they think that the digital PlayStation five is going to be 400. Um, the disc one is going to be five. I think people are way overestimating how much that DVD drive cost at cost to them and how much they're going to be willing to charge to get it. I think it's going to be a $50 difference. Um, I think the two most likely price points are either going to be 450 and 500 for digital and disc or 500 and 550. I think it's going to be 500 and 550. And I say that because um, there's not a chance that Xbox isn't selling that system as cheap as possible. There, there, there's not a chance that that $500, they're definitely losing money on it. Um, and they're probably losing a couple hundred bucks. And the thing that people need to realize is that the Xbox and the PlayStation overall, their hardware, the RAM, the CPUs, all of that stuff probably cost about the same at cost. There's some slight differences. The, the Xbox um, hardware is a hair faster besides the SSD. Um, but I would say overall, their hardware costs about the same, except the SSD that I just mentioned. The PlayStation SSD that they're putting in there isn't, uh, I think there's only, it's only just now becoming available uh, to the consumer market and it is insanely expensive because it's a lot faster. Um, and, and memory is always super fast when it's new technology, uh, super expensive. Uh, and so I think people are nuts if they think that the PlayStation five is going to cost the same as the Xbox, because I believe the PlayStation five, um, build costs more than the Xbox and it may cost a few hundred bucks more, um, or at least a hundred dollars more. So what I think is they're going to do the digital edition for four ninety nine to be a direct answer to the series, uh, uh, series X. And then I think they're going to do the disc edition for 550 and they're going to say, Hey, if you really want a disc in your PlayStation five, still 550 is the number, you know, you have to dish out some extra cash. If you want just a digital one and it's the same price as the Xbox and we have all of the, the best ex exclusives already. Um, now there's a lot of arguments about backwards compatibility and, and how games are going to work. We're like, you know, but we'll get into, maybe we can talk about that another time. Um, I think that's most likely. I think that there's a chance the PlayStation five is going to be 600 and 550. Um, but the PlayStation three was such a disaster for Sony at $600 that even if it means they have to take a hit, I don't think there's a chance they'll sell a system for 600. I, I would say 500 and 550 for the two editions is most likely I would say 450 and 500 is possible, but I just have a hard time believing they're really going to be able to take enough of a hit on the digital PlayStation five at 450, um, because people need to realize that 
um, the Microsoft um, and Xbox and Sony and PlayStation, the relationships of those brands to their owner are very different. Um, Xbox is essentially a blip on the radar to Microsoft. Um, it's it's more, from what I've noticed, intended to spread their brand and their platform than it really is to be a big money driver for them. On the other hand, if you look at um, the financials of Sony, well, one, you'll notice that I believe Microsoft is seven or eight times larger of a company, which, I mean, it makes sense. It's, you know, it, it's, it's Microsoft, they own Windows and, and especially their Azure um, online uh, storage platforms, stuff like that. Um, indirect competition with like Amazon's AWS. And I mean, that's, that's a big deal. That's, that's probably where they make the most of their money is in cloud storage and cloud computing. And Sony doesn't have that. In fact, Sony is going to use the Azure Microsoft platform for their online services. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that kind of gives you an idea, um, of, of where the two companies are at and where they're kind of in different places. Um, Sony really needs PlayStation to make a lot of money for their company, for their bottom line, where Microsoft, I'm sure doesn't want Xbox to lose money and they want to be competitive and successful, but the motivations are different. And I think that's also why you're seeing such a difference in how Sony seems to still be treating the console game kind of an old school way in the way with generations and the way that they're marketing and things like that where Microsoft seems to be taking a, a different path because I really do think they have different motivations, different goals and, and so on for their platforms. Uh, and then the final bit of news here we got this week uh, or recently was the new NVIDIA, uh, new NVIDIA GPUs, the 3000 series. So I believe we know of a 3060, 3070, 3080 and 3090. And I believe they're um, also going to bring out a new um, Titan uh, card, which is like the no holds barred, like crazy, like three or four or $5,000 card. I don't even know because I've never even looked. Um, I know for me, what I'm excited for is probably the 3070 card. Um, it's going to be $499. Uh, it's seeing how powerful it is compared to what's currently out. Um, the problem is with GPUs and PC parts in general, and why I support people being console players, is that with PC, there's always that next carrot. There's always that next thing to buy. Sure, you can buy a four or $500 PC right now that whoops a 1X or a PlayStation 4 Pro, but if you're spending less than a thousand bucks on a PC, in my opinion, you're wasting your time and your money. You might as well just not have one, maybe buy a console, especially like the one or the Series S or something. I don't know. Um, I think you should spend a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on a PC if you really want to get the advantages that PC offers you. Um, but the problem is that even if you spend all that money, there's always that next CPU to get. There's always that next GPU. There's always more RAM. There's always that better memory that's coming. There's always more memory. There's always that new motherboard you need. There's that new you know power unit that you need to power this 3090 that's going to need like a thousand watts or whatever. Um, that game gets weird. Um, but either way, the, the power that's coming to the new 3000 series is a big deal. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk about how it's already kind of making the PlayStation five and series X kind of old. I kind of disagree, especially because they're seeing at least the series X GPU is equal to like a 2080. I would argue that I bet less than 25% of PC gamers have a 2000 series GPU. Um, I, I would bet it's only maybe 15% or so, maybe even less. Um, I'd say most people are still on the 1000 series or whatever. Um, or, or, or even the 900 series, uh, is very possible. I, uh, I had a 96, uh, 960 until fairly recently. Um, and I have a, tw a 1070 TI now. So if anything, you're probably going to see a lot of people upgrading the 2000 series cards. If they drop in price, they typically actually don't. A lot of people keep saying that too, that like the 2000 series cards dropping in price, make the new systems worse. Uh, the new consoles worse because you can get more power for less money. That's not really true because um, what happens with the GPUs is they make runs of them and then they never make them again. Like they don't keep making 1000 series cards when the 2000 series comes out. They focus just on 2000. The 1000 series cards are done. You can buy them used. You might be able to find some random ones that are in a you know, a local computer store that never got sold. Maybe they discount those a little bit, but they hold their value super well. Um, so these 3000 series cards are going to be really cool for the people that go for them, especially that 3070, because it's price point is pretty damn good. 
if you can find one, uh, if you can even pre-order one. Um, I know for me, it's, it was kind of like a, ah, oh, man, should I wait to upgrade my Xbox until next year and get my 3070? Ah, uh, but then the 3070, it's going to kind of bottleneck my CPU and my, uh, my RAM probably. So, uh, and then my Xbox, I can sell my current Xbox and it can kind of pay for the new one. Um, and so for me, I'm probably going to do an Xbox this year and then a, G, a new GPU next year, maybe if we, uh, can spare the cash. So, uh, but either way, all three of these things that are going on right now. Um, gaming is, 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 is looking good. Um, things are being pushed forward on all fronts. There's even a, an announcement that there may be like a switch pro coming out. That's going to be a 4k capable switch. Um, what people need to realize what I've said for a long time is that especially Microsoft and Sony, the more they're actually competing because there was no competition, this gen Sony ran away with it right out the gate, basically. Um, and we've seen that in their exclusives and even their hardware, especially with the PS4. Now the one X is, you know, it's, it's, it's better than the PS4 from a technical standpoint, but Hey, PS4 still has a PS and a PS4 pro still has the last of us and God of war and horizon and all of those amazing games. And it's the simple fact is, is that Xbox doesn't now what I would argue is that most people play third party games. And so I think the one X is the best system right now for most people. And that's why I also think the series S and X are going to be the best for most people because most people play Ubisoft games and EA games and Activision games. And the best place to play all of those games is still going to be the Xbox in my slightly biased opinion. Um, that said, uh, what I'm excited for is it seems like Microsoft is making moves to not get trounced. I still think Sony's probably going to outsell them from a purely unit base. I think it's going to be a lot closer now with the series S. If you combine the series S and X sales numbers, I don't think it's going to be the God, the PlayStation four is sold like what, like 110 million units. And I think the Xbox is around like 50. I don't think the spread is going to be like that. I think that it's going to end up being like a uh, Sony is going to have like 55% of the market share and Xbox is going to get like 45. It's that's going to be more the split where I still think Sony edges out because of their exclusives. Um, but I think Xbox makes big, uh, leaps and especially in the next two or three years, as all of their exclusive studios start putting out exclusive games and good exclusive games. I mean, we're looking at halo, hopefully is going to be good. We're looking at Hellblade. We're looking at, um, uh, Everwild and uh, the things that like Obsidian is working on, probably in Outer Worlds 2, the Avalon or whatever that game is, uh, the new Fable. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of games that are on their way um, that are going to start to even up that exclusivity uh, argument as well. So um, it's just a good time for games, man. The, the better Microsoft and Sony do and the more they compete, that also makes things better for PC players because there's not a lot of AAA games coming out only for PC. Um, PC depends on the console makers and either, you know, the big developers making games that they only do if it's on console, um, or they depend on the exclusive studios for PlayStation and Xbox putting out their games on uh, PC as well, which Xbox does. It's They have the ultimate pass for PC, which is amazing. And then Sony's starting to dabble. They're doing Death Stranding. They're doing Horizon. Um, it's it's good stuff, honestly. I'm really excited for it. So, so that's what I have for that. Um, so for some content updates, there is a Ubisoft Forward Division 2 trailer breakdown on my YouTube. Um, streams are still focusing on the Division 2 Hunters uh, and farming some better gear control points now until the 22nd. Um, I need one more mask from the hunters, uh, the burning school hunters. I, I only killed one of them, even though the other one gave me the key. Uh, and I need one more hunter key, uh, the group of four hunters. Uh, I've tried now, I think twice to fight them with some friends and the one Dagon dude gets away. And I'm pretty sure it's programmed where the final hunter you kill is the one who drops the key. So we're still working on it. I've actually dropped my, uh, my world level down to, to hard to try to help out. Uh, I had bumped up the challenging to take out the last couple hunters. Um, and we just can't quite pull it off with these group of four. So we're going to be trying that again this weekend and this coming week. And once I do that, I'll probably just be trying to upgrade, um, my builds and stuff like that until the 22nd. Um, the big thing I've been doing too is actually saving gear that has unique appearance mods 
or appearances so that I can save it for the appearance mod system and then get rid of them after they log themselves or whatever. I believe the library is going to work kind of like the, um, the attribute library where you only need to have it once and then it saves and then you can get rid of the gear. I'll have to verify that though. Cause I don't want to get rid of cool looking stuff. And that's why I have. So this ended up being a, a longer podcast than I expected. I actually think that other gaming news segment will end up being a pretty long segment, especially in the coming months as things um, get kind of crazy. So um, if you like that segment, let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, I'll definitely be asking questions and trying to get um, listener questions about both Division 2 and just gaming in general. Um, I'm actually even considering maybe change up the branding a little bit to reflect this being a more general podcast, um, especially during months that are probably coming eventually where there won't be division news uh, and the speculation can only get us so far. I'll wait and see. And I do um, ask for your, for your input on that. So please let me know. Uh, I am Bond Diesel on Twitch where I stream a few times a week. So check me out there. I'm also on Twitter at Bond Diesel or at the echo cast uh if you want some cool echo cast or bond diesel merch please check out designbyhumans.com slash shop slash bond diesel or just go to the website and search bond diesel and order uh, i think there's a, like a 30 percent discount now or something so go check it out uh, that's all i have so until next time <laughs>